Being that I've been a long-term dividend growth investor for around six or seven years now, ever since the Yield Max ETFs came out and became very popular throughout the dividend community over the last year or so, I knew for certain that I also had to look into these ETFs, considering some of them are yielding over 60% or even more. Now, in 2023, I did buy some TSLY, and I also did a very specific, interesting strategy when it comes to buying into TSLY. And I'm going to share exactly what I did with you guys in this video. Now, if you own any TSLY or have ever thought about owning it, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into it. I just finished my brand new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from zero to now over seven figures invested, and also on how I earn more than $6,000 per month in dividends. I also finished my custom dividend tracker that you can use to track your dividend income progress on an ongoing basis. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today. It's the first link in my description. So before we go into all the shares of TSLY that I bought over the last year and if I'm up, if I'm down, and the strategy I utilized specifically. For those that don't know, the TSLY Yieldmax Tesla Option Income Strategy ETF is an ETF from Yieldmax that utilizes a synthetic cover call strategy and basically references a Tesla stock. And because Tesla does offer so much premium in the option market, this ETF has been able to distribute a ton of dividends over the last year, which is definitely what caught my eye in the first place. Now, getting right into it, even though TSLY has paid a massive amount of dividends over the last year or so, look at the chart in the max time frame. This ETF is down 46.38%, and keep in mind this ETF has only been around since the end of 2022. Now, I talk about why a lot of these cover call strategy ETFs lose value over time. I've talked about it on previous videos, so definitely check out those other videos if you want to learn more on why this happens. Keep in mind one certain thing, when investing into a cover call ETF, especially like this one, TSLY, you're most likely going to see the ETF decay in price over time. Now, this is because a cover call ETF does have a capped amount of upside. Now, since TSLY references to Tesla stock, if Tesla stock has a crazy green day, it moves up in price, TSLY is going to be able to follow it by a degree and have some of the upside captured, but it's going to have a limited upside because again, the cover call mechanics, which I went over in previous videos. So again, make sure to take a look. But basically I had a good hunch that, that TSLY most likely was going to continue to decay over time because again, that's what a lot of these super high yield cover call ETFs do, or at least I've done historically. So first of all, right here, looking into the shares of TSLY that I own, I do own some TSLY on my other portfolios as well, but this is the portfolio that I used a very specific strategy with. So in this portfolio, I bought 105 shares of TSLY at an average cost of $13.43. TSLY is currently trading around $10.96. Is at a new low? So that means that on paper, I'm down $258.97 on my 105 shares of TSLY in this portfolio. So just to make an easy round number, let's just say I'm down 250 bucks. Now also in this portfolio, as you can see right here, when I bought the 100 shares of TSLY, I went ahead and sold a cover call. At the time of selling the cover call, TSLY was around $14 per share, and I sold a $12 cover call back around a few months ago. Now because I did so, I was able to basically short TSLY by selling a cover call with a strike price even less than where it was trading at the time. And now because that you can see right here that this cover call is currently up $144.33, or up around 87.8%. And at this rate, this cover call is most likely going to expire, meaning that I will receive around $164 in credits unless TSLY moves back up in price, which of course at this rate, who knows? So if we take the $250 that I'm down in TSLY more or less and the $144 that I'm up, let's just say $150, I'm now net down $100 on my shares of TSLY more or less. So keep that in mind, so far with this experiment, the 100 shares that I own, I'm down around 250, but with the covered call, I'm now up around 150, so I'm basically net down 100. So once again, just to recap, I'm currently in this portfolio down around 250 on my shares of TSLY where it's trading right now, and I'm also up around 150 on the option. So I'm down around 100 bucks, but also keep in mind, I was paid a dividend every single month while I'm holding onto the shares of TSLY. $58 in September, $61 in November, and around 63 bucks back in December. So net net, if we were to add everything together, more or less, I'm pretty much broken even on the TSLY experiment. But I want to be very clear here. If I weren't to have sold the cover call with TSLY and basically hedge against the downside and short it, I would be down a lot more at this point, which would be pretty disappointing. Now, this really brings up the idea of whether or whether or not super high yielding ETFs like this one are even worth buying in the first place. Because you see, even if an ETF like TSLY pays 50 cents plus on a monthly basis, which is an absurd dividend amount, keep in mind, guys, 
Most stocks for ETFs pay around 3 to 5% per year in dividends. This ETF is paying around 60% distribution rate as of right now, which is by no means normal. But even if an ETF like TSLY is able to pay this much in dividends on a consistent basis, what does it really matter whatsoever if the underlying investment just continues and continues to decay? Because after all, your total return is going to just keep moving down and down and down, and you'd be much better off just buying into something else. Not to mention that if an investor was to have invested $10,000 into TSLY and $10,000 into Tesla stock back in November of 2022, the investor that bought TSLY would basically have $600 return, where if they bought into Tesla, they'd have $2,900 return, or around a 6% return versus a 29% return. So the investor that just bought shares of Tesla that doesn't even pay a dividend to begin with would have a much, much larger total return than that of the investor chasing that super high yield. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm still not interested in buying into investment vehicles like TSLY and like the other YieldMax ETFs, but for me specifically, I, for the most part, am going to be buying a few shares as more or less of a gamble and or I'm going to be utilizing the cover call strategy. Because if you buy shares at TSLY or Kony or any of these different ETFs on the YieldMax website and you hedge against a downside, you sell a cover call in the ETF, earn some premium by selling an in-the-money strike price cover call and hedge against the downside, short it, and along the way earn a nice juicy dividend, that to me is the only way that I would feel comfortable ever buying a significant portion of something like TSLY or really any of these other YieldMax ETFs, even though I know some of these have performed quite well over time. Now looking at TSLY's performance and using total return as the metric, which means dividends plus price return or lack of there included. Over the last month, TSLY is down 2.62%, and that's with dividends included over the last six months. With dividends included over the last 184 days, TSLY is down 15.83%. So over the last six months, even though massive dividends have been paid to shareholders of TSLY, including myself, even the massive dividend did not save us. Now, interestingly enough, over the last one year time frame, 365 days ago, with the price return, or I guess lack thereof, and the dividends included, we're looking at a 55.25% return, which is still very, very impressive. Which does go to show that over certain time frames, if you get in low enough, ETFs like this could potentially still make you a good amount of money. That's of course if these ETFs don't continue to decay and drop down to zero dollars at some point here. So now that we went over TSLY, talked a little bit about the performance of the ETF, compared it to Tesla even, and talked about my strategy on what I've been doing when it comes to TSLY, selling cover calls on it which correct me if I'm wrong, but I have not really heard anyone else doing this. And I personally think it's a very good idea for those investors out there that want to protect their capital, but also want to get in on the action. I want to hear what you guys think down below of all this. Are you personally still buying TSLY currently? And comment down below what you think about my strategy of selling cover calls on your shares. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like in it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.